If we don't do anything about it, autonomous weapons and AI could become a radically new and dangerous form of killing people. Because you no longer need a nation of people and a bunch of followers to raise an army. If you can just manufacture an army, and this gets into kind of the, the Star Wars Clone Wars, you just clone an army or build a robot army, that could kind of fundamentally change, you know, the course of history. My name is Peter Acero, and I'm a professor at the New School, and I'm the co-founder and vice chair of the International Committee for Robot Arms Control, which is part of the campaign to stop killer robots. I think the public, uh, when they hear killer robot, uh, goes straight to science fiction. With an image of a Terminator. Maybe they think of, if they're from my generation, Maximilian from uh, The Black Hole. <laughs> Kubrick's 2001 is, of course, a, a masterpiece. For a long time, HAL has stood as, you know, one of the iconic artificial intelligences that has this kind of calm voice and wants to play chess and things like that. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. We are all, by any practical definition of the words, foolproof and incapable of error. But also then has this kind of murderous dark side. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I think you know, as we now have interactive voice devices like Siri and Alexa that we talk to, I don't know how you cannot help but think of, of how <laughs> as you do that. And, and as they start to now also have cameras in them. So they're also starting to watch what's happening in your room as well as recording the audio of that. We've given up so much of our privacy. I think right now it's a bit of a Wild West situation and, and it is quite terrifying. And uh, the, the specter of Hal is, is a fitting one. Alongside the benefits, AI will also bring dangers, like powerful autonomous weapons. We've also had warnings from you know, scientists like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk. I think we should be really concerned about AI. That artificial intelligence is going to unlock some Pandora's box of super powerful, super intelligent artificial systems that could threaten the very existence of humanity. And I think that's, you know, theoretically a possibility. But I think they're touching on something that people are very much aware of and afraid of, which is that these systems are also becoming embedded in our society in many ways that actually do control our lives in very powerful ways. And we should become more and more aware of this. And we should have a, a voice in shaping how those technologies are developed and what kinds of impacts they're going to have on society. Often they think of them as a humanoid form, things like C-3PO. Nice to see a familiar face. Ichuta. How rude. But the reality that, that we're concerned with uh, in the campaign to stop killer robots are autonomous weapon systems. And these are weapon systems that militaries are developing right now uh, that are capable of targeting and engaging weapons uh, without any meaningful human control. So, of course, there's already lots of automation being used in today's military systems, and we can look at things like drones uh, that are armed. Right now, the ones that the U.S. is using, things like the Predator and the Reaper drone, these are controlled by humans remotely. They have a lot of automation in terms of the autopilot, in terms of taking off and landing. But when it comes to actually engaging the weapon systems, the humans have to be operating the system. They designate the targets. They lock the laser designator on and fire the weapon and follow that through to the impact. So what we're really concerned about are situations where the computer, using its own software and programming, is analyzing sensor data, video, infrared, other kinds of information, and determining from that imagery that something is a target and then attacking it. And this really changes, I think, fundamentally the nature of targeting because machines cannot be legal and moral agents, so they cannot really make a legal determination or know that it's morally justified to kill. They could act unpredictably and cause harms to civilians. 
They could initiate or escalate conflicts. They could lead to arms races that could be you know, regionally and globally destabilizing. They can be susceptible to hacking, which means they can also be taken over and redirected by third parties, terrorist organizations. So we could be attacked by some robot and not know who owns that robot or what country sent that robot out. There's just a whole host of things, but I think there's really kind of two kind of legal and moral issues. And one is the legal issue of the accountability gap. If you send out a robot not knowing exactly what it's gonna do, you have no intent. Even if you kinda know it might go kill a whole village of civilians or something, right? And then you have the question of human rights and human dignity. And basically the way the law works and the way the, the UN Declaration on Human Rights is framed is everybody has a right to life. And there's only very extreme and specific circumstances in which your right to life can be overridden by others' rights to life. And then armed conflict is one of these. But in order to do that, you have to be a legal and moral agent to sort of make that determination. And machines can't do that. So it has no situational awareness, no contextual understanding of whether it's appropriate to use violent force. There was a, a film produced by the Future of Life Institute uh, last year called Slaughterbots um, that depicted a, a potential dystopian future of autonomous weapons. And these were small drones that would carry a small charge that would fly in, up to your head and like basically shoot you in the head. So you could pick out all those people in a city and then just drop plane loads of these drones who would then hunt down those people and kill them. And these point to the fact that this kind of weapon, once you permit autonomous weapons, could radically transform warfare. So on the one hand, it could become a new kind of weapon of mass destruction. A small group of people could release an army or fleet of these kinds of robots and kill many thousands of people. And then you can think through how you know, those kinds of systems could be used by tyrants and dictators and turn against their own people and things like that. And there's just this sort of Again, a Pandora's box. There's so many ways in which these systems are going to negatively impact society. It's just really hard to justify their permitting them to exist. Humans make mistakes all the time. But even an 18-year-old is much more sophisticated in processing information and understanding context and situation than any computer system that we have right now. And even when they're scared and hungry and tired and confused, they're still perform at incredible levels in terms of their cognitive abilities. I think the average citizen should be very concerned with this issue. Right now, what we really need are, are citizens to go to their governments and say, look, there's an easy solution enact this treaty and you know support the its movement forward in the UN and that's you know that's something that states can do quite easily at this point once these weapons are out there and and we start to see all of these consequences i think it's going to be far more difficult to prohibit them